we're gonna do something a little different. This isn't a hate on Malika Andrews party. We're just gonna analyze and break down a member of the media just like they do with athletes and players and see how they can improve. Let's get started. I think that Dylan Brooks should be suspended for game three and possibly game four. Look, mm. you have to clean this up. It, it, look, we talking about they, people saying we don't know if he did it intentionally. He fouled him on purpose and he did it right. with intentions. Okay, let's we get that out that. the way. Here's the thing that we have to... No, nah, I mean, you, looking at the play, I, you, I, you can't, right. you can't I'm, I'm look at a person. Yes, you, yeah, but you're no, making no, an assumption. Yes, you can. No, you can't no, look at a yes, person uh, and know yes, what their intent was. It was a dangerous play no, regardless, I but you can't. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I didn't realize we had a bunch I'm of line I'm reading. I'm going to say Please continue. Eric, how old were you when you dunked the ball for the first time? Now, here's when he humbled her. 21? Uh, 12. 12. How old were you when you dunked the ball for the first 12. time? 12. I was about 13 years old when I dunked the ball for the first time. I know what a fast break looks like. I have four months out in a season because I had my wrist taken out on a dunk. Mm -hmm. I know not necessarily the intent to hurt, but I know the intent yes. to foul extremely hard. That's, yes, and that's that is the fair. repercussions. Okay, so right away, she's getting upset she was wrong, being condescending, and not respecting her colleagues. The simple fact is, all three of those guys are former players, and they all said they can watch a play and get a conclusion from that. Woj didn't say that. Woj didn't play. He knew better. But all the players that watch game film and understand how the game works knew that that play was intentional. Woj, you reported that Joe Missoula will be the interim head coach here. You can see his resume on your screen. He's been a Celtics assistant coach the last three seasons after spending the previous three seasons at Fairmount State. And he played for West Virginia between 2006 and 2011 and now could become the NBA's youngest head coach at 34 years old. And we'd be remiss not to also mention that Missoula was arrested twice at West Virginia, once in 2008 for underage drinking and aggravated assault. He pled guilty, paid a fine, and then again in 2009 for domestic battery after an incident at Morgantown Bar. The domestic battery case never went to trial. It was settled in August of 2009. He paid a $100 fine and court costs, plus had to do 40 hours of community service. Now, that was 13 years ago. He settled and paid both fines. So Bringing up someone's background to see how it could affect their future job is okay in itself. But going off what we know about Malika and her past behavior, do you think it would have been acceptable if someone else on the panel had brought those things up about a woman? I have a hard time seeing it because she won't even hold women accountable that are doing wrong right now, so why would she do it for their past? She would say, they're not here to defend themselves and we're not going to blame women if we don't know all the facts. That's what she would say. Kobe Bryant when I've seen him personally get in people's face and just cuss them out to their damn near in tears mm -hmm. and they're grown men. You know Michael Jordan probably would have been fighting his teammates if he had to see some of the stuff that these guys do. So I feel like what makes LeBron great, he's always been knocked, oh he's not a killer, he'll make the right pass and I've always loved that. But I also think sometimes that hurts him because, not saying I've never had him as a leader and I'm sure he has his ways of particularly leading this team. But I know for a fact if, if, if the two of the guys that I mentioned before saw some of the effort and energy that he saw from his teammates this year, it would have been an issue. I mean, when Kobe, Dwight, and Nash all had injuries, though, they didn't win a playoff game. They got neither to the did, playoffs, but, though. But they didn't win a game, neither this Lakers team. The year 19, when he was averaging 22 on 37% shooting, Kobe did. The Lakers, they went 10 and 25 in the games that he played in. So I, I, I'm not sure it's – I understand what you're saying, Matt, but I'm not so, so sure it's say, well, Kobe Bryant would have been the white horse to fix. Kobe Bryant would have been the white horse. Definitely not Ramona. saying that, but what I'm saying is Kobe would get in – like, he would not let the sure, win some of his teammates get in someone's face and it doesn't Live. turn into wins, then you're just getting in somebody's face. But it's going to be a problem the entire season. And it just didn't seem like at some point it just seemed like everyone's just like, oh, well, forget it. It is what it is. And I just know, like I said, this is not even a not. What LeBron has been able to do this season alone has been absolutely incredible. He continues to climb yeah. the historical ladder. But I'm just saying from a standpoint of just not having what he saw on, on, on a day-in, day-out basis sometimes, those guys wouldn't have had it like that. Here again, she's not really respecting the experiences that Matt Barnes has gone through as a player. That's the unique thing that he brings to the panel that no one else has, other than the other players, of course. But on that panel, he's the player. He's been there. He's done that. He knows how Kobe leads, and he's seen how LeBron leads, and he knows it's different. And all he's doing is pointing out the difference. He wasn't being vulgar. He wasn't hating on LeBron. He was simply pointing out 
that Michael and Kobe lead differently than LeBron, and sometimes it works better that way, and sometimes it doesn't. Even A, with all due respect, this is not about pointing the finger. Stop. The fact that it was able to go on all day, the fact that we are sitting here debating whether somebody else should have been suspended or not, we are not here, Stephen A., to further blame women. That is not why we are here. With this one, we already know she falsely accused Stephen A. of blaming women, but what I'd like to add is if you're the guilty party that slept with Ime Udoka, why don't you come forward to stop the speculation? If you know your coworkers that are also women are being dragged on social media, why don't you take responsibility for your actions? Notice how she never called for that. Instead, she's blaming everybody else for wondering why the woman wasn't punished. And that's not fair. Especially when she's the one that just aired out the new coach's dirty laundry all over national television. When they asked, is anybody else going to be punished? And they said no. And my whole thing is, is this, right? These are some of the facts that have been out. These are some facts that I know that, you know, this relationship, one of these relationships that was had, that was had with Ime Udoka and one of these women, it was consensual, meaning that this woman actually played a part in it too. So my thing is, yes, Ime Udoka was wrong. We get that. His punishment, he deserved that, and whatever else follows, I hate it for him, but he put himself in this position. But why are the other people getting left off the hook? Well, That's the Kendrick, problem that I have Kendrick, right now. Kendrick, Everybody got to be held Kendrick, accountable. I think that we need to circle back to what Shanae said, is that there was a investigation that was conducted by an independent law firm here, and without i think that transparency is what will rule the day here and so without having all of the information it is unfair and irresponsible of us to go and to speculate on that because what we have to well, i'm not i'm not speculating sure. i have the information i'm mm -hmm. not speculating but what we have to go with here is the fact that an independent law firm came in did this investigation and the facts that they were presented, they came to the conclusion that Ima Udoka violated a policy that, that warranted a one-year suspension. And I share your frustration with the lack of transparency while understanding that there is some things that they need to, from a legal perspective, keep private. But knowing all of that, understanding all of that, we have to come to the uh, conclusion that whatever rule, the conduct that was broken on one side, it is not the same on the other side. I thank you for your perspective. The last thing I want to mention is notice how in every one of these clips, she's interrupting the speaker, but no one ever interrupts her. Once she's taken the floor, it's her floor. That's what I don't like. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to have a different perspective, but why don't you ever let them finish their point? And in Perk's case, he never got to finish his point. She completely cut him off and took him off the air, and that was the end of it. If someone says something she doesn't like, She's allowed to interrupt and even cut them off completely, and I do not like that one bit. That's my biggest problem with all this. But that's just what I think about all this. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe for more NBA content just like this. I'll see you in the next one.